everyone. It's Jarrett Moore with the Enterprise DNA team. Today we're going to go over a video and it's going to be over the all selected versus all function in DAX. How I come up with the idea for this video is I was recently going through some of the videos that were published to the Enterprise DNA YouTube channel and came across one that Sam did on the introduction to the all function. So real quick, let's head on over to YouTube on the browser here. And we'll actually see, here is the link to that video that Sam did back in, uh, that was published back in February of this year. And as he goes through this video, just a small little recap, he, he goes over the all function and how it can be used with comparing date versus total sales. So what we're gonna do today is take that example and take it one step further and showing you how to either use all or all selected when we're doing the percentage of total sales. And it could be by date, it could be by customer. But in, in the example today, let's head on back over to Power BI Desktop. I am going to be doing this video off of division. And basically division is sort of like a, a, a job type. So you can see I just put this slicer on the page here just to show that the year is, these results are from 2020. And this is the amount invoiced for each one of these divisions. And then I provided over here a slicer for division that we'll use later once we add in the percentage of total invoiced using either the all or all selected function. So let's head on over here to the table where I have these measures stored. If I open up the treat as measures here, you can see that I have some in, uh, invoice measures over here. And then this first one is the invoiced. And if I open that measure up, this is basically just taking the invoiced amount, which is basically the total estimates. And this was a treat as measure due to uh, there no there being no relationship between the dates table and the jobs table. So I created that uh, relationship virtually. So that's how I created the invoiced amount. So now what we'll do is we'll take the invoiced using the all function. And basically all I did there was just calculate use that previous measure of invoiced, use the all function, and then I wanted to, to, to show only by the division in, in my jobs table. So if we add this invoiced all to the table here, things are working a little slow this morning. You can see by adding the invoiced all measure to the table, it gives us the total amount for invoiced for each one of these rows. So that is what the all function is doing. And in the video that Sam did a few weeks back, you can go over that to see why he used the, the all function in that video. So with invoiced all, now if, what the next step I want to do in this is I want to actually show what percentage of total sales did each one of these divisions show for the year. And for this year is 2020. So what we did here is I just selected a, called this one all invoice percentage. And basically all we're going to do in this measure is just divide the invoiced amount by the invoiced all, uh, all number here for each one of these divisions. So when I pull this in here and actually get it sorted correctly, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's ever since I've updated to the February 2021 edition of Power BI Desktop, it does seem to not want to put things in the right order when, when you dump things into a uh, into the value section here, which is a little odd. But as you can see now, right now this is actually working uh, correctly based off of 
you know, for reconstruction, this was 775,000 of 1.86 million dollars, which is 41.5 per six, or 41, a little over 41 percent, which is showing correctly. But what happens if I use my slicer over here and I just want to look at reconstruction and mold, for example? Now, this all invoice percentage is using that same number as we showed before. So this is basically taking this number or this number divided by this number to get this percentage right here. So it's, it's only show, or it's, it's off of the all, I'm sorry, off of the all amount. So this 53 divided by this is, is this percentage. So it's not showing us the expected results that we want because in this we want to show that, hey, out of mold and reconstruction, you know, what was the percentages to do that? So that's where the all selected function comes into, in, into effect in this video. So I'll uncheck this for now. And what I did also over here on the right hand side is I created measures for invoice using the all selected function, which all I did was just use the measure branching technique that Sam uses. And instead of using all, just used all selected. So I'll put this measure over here in the table move this down we'll shrink this table up just a little bit so i have some room here because we're going to be adding some more measures as we get along here so the invoice all selected it, it is showing the same amount as invoiced all because we have all of these showing right here and we have the total because these are all selected in the model i know we're not using the slicer but in this instance, we are still showing all selected because all are we, we're not filtering out any divisions at this point in time. So then, what I did is I created the invo uh, the all selected invoice percentage, same as the all function. Uh, just use the different, just use invoice the invoice all selected to get that percentage. So I'll dump that in here. And you can see it's it's showing the same way as the all invoiced percentage. But here's where the trick and where the whole point of this video comes in, into play is when I go over to the actual slicer here and click on the division here. And let's say that in our previous example, we just want to see reconstruction and mold this number right here is only giving us 44%, which is 44% of this total, whereas the invoiced, the all selected function that we used is giving us 100%. So I wanted to know out of reconstruction and mold, you know, which each one of these numbers, you know, what percentage of this total of the 828,000 did these two make up? So we have the 6% and the 93.5%. So this is the is how we get that total. So we can even add some more in here. If I wanted to add water mitigation, you can see these numbers change. And obviously these numbers change too, but this is the expected result that we're wanting to get from this video. That's all I wanted to share for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this tip and I hope it helps you in your future endeavors when you're trying to calculate totals of what, whether it be invoiced, total sales, and this will definitely help you get that corrected percentage of total that you wanna see in these type of, of measures. That's it for now, thanks. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, 
check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.